Okay, for this problem here, um, let's read what it's asking us to do and then let's talk about what, what we have to do. So we have a scatter plot and it says that this shows the number of years of experience X, so that's down here, and the hourly pay rate Y for each of 23 cash years in Michigan. So it's showing that, you know, as your years of experience increase, you get paid more, all right? And that kind of, uh, kind of makes some sense, right? Okay, so it says write, write an approximate equation from the line of best fit for the data. It doesn't have to be an exact line of best fit. All right, so the very first thing we have to do is we have to make a line of best fit, all right? So let's, let's do that. So let's take our line and we're gonna try and kind of run this like sort of through the middle of everything. So I don't know, let's put it about there and then maybe, I don't know, maybe I like that right there. Um, it doesn't, yeah. So what we'll do now, okay, is we'll we'll put this right here, okay. And what we're going to do is it wants us to write an equation. Now, in order to write an equation, we need to know two things. We need to know the slope, and we need to know the uh, we need to know the y-intercept. Now, if you look at this, you can find the y-intercept by just looking at where does this cross the y-axis. Remember, the y-intercept is where does it intercept the y-axis. Well, it intercepts the y-axis at about 6. So I know I'm going to have y equals, and I'm just going to write this down. I'm going to have mx plus b. Okay? So I know what b is going to be. b is my y-intercept. All right? b is always your y-intercept in these equations. So that's 6. So I'm going to replace b with the number 6. Now, what I have to find is I have to find my slope. My slope is going to go where m is. Now, to find slope, remember slope is how much does this thing rise over how much does it, uh, how much does it go over, all right? And so this thing does go up from left to right. It doesn't go down. It does increase. And it looks like if you look at the whole graph, and I'm going to use the entire graph to help me, it looks like it goes over from 0 to 24, so that would be my change in x. So that would be my, my, uh, my denominator, okay? Your numerator is your rise. So my, I figured out my run. My run is 24. My rise is it goes up from 6 all the way up to 20. So how much of a difference is that, all right? And it's not exact. It looks like it's a little more than 20. But we're going to say it goes from 6 to 20. So it goes up 14. Okay, it goes up 14. And it goes over 24. All right, so let's grab our calculator. And let's go 14. So that's your rise is 14. And then your run is 24. Divided by 24. So here's your rise over your run. And then let's see what it gives us. Well, it gives us this kind of ugly decimal here. And remember, this is approximate. So let's round this to 0.6, all right, and see if it lets us do that. So let's see if we can put in 0 0.6. Okay, so we have 0 0.6 plus 6. It's going to be positive 0 0.6 because it goes up from left to right. And uh, yeah. So now we have an equation, and it says we're going to use this equation and predict the hourly pay rate for a cashier with 18 years of experience. Well, the years of experience is your x. So all you have to do for this is just put 18 in for x and then see what you get. So my answer is going to be equal to 0 0.6 times and then substitute in that 18, and then we're going to add 6 to it. So I'm just, all you're doing is... Um, all you're doing is substituting in for x from the number they give you in the question. So let's see what that gives me. 16.8. So they're saying the hourly pay rate should be $16.80, which is a lot of money for a cashier. I don't know how accurate this is, but that would be great if a cashier could make that much money. All right, so let's see if Alex likes our answer here. And it does. All right, fantastic. All right, let's try another one. 
Okay, write an approximate equation, line of best fit for this data, and this data shows time spent watching TV, which is X, and time spent doing homework Y by each of 24 students. So we got to make our line of best fit, and then we got to write an equation for it. So let's start with that. So let's go up here and let's put our uh, let's put this right kind of in the middle between 28 and 32. All right, and then let's take this. And you know what? I hate to say it, but it looks like this could go almost in the same spot. So let's put this also at 30. And that's going to be kind of nice because you're going to see in a minute what that does for our slope. So that's an approximate line of best fit. Um, it crosses the y-intercept at 30. So I, if you have y equals mx plus b, I know that my B, my y-intercept, is 30 because that's where it crosses. That's always where this crosses right here. Don't make it any more complicated than that. And now for my slope, remember it's your rise divided by your run. Well, from here to here, going from left to right, it goes down. So I'm going to have a negative rise. So it goes down 30 units. And then from here to here, it goes over 30 units. That's your run. So we have 30 over 30. All right, I don't really need to put this in the calculator, but we have negative 30 divided by 30. And that's going to give you negative 1. Hopefully you realize that. All right, so my slope is negative 1. So for m, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go negative 1 and put in 1, negative 1. Now, remember that if you have the coefficient of 1, whether it's negative or positive, you don't have to put it in. But I'm just going to kind of leave it in here just to let you guys know what it stands for, right? So we have a slope of negative 1. That means it will, for every hour you watch TV, you spend one less hour doing homework, all right? So now, using this equation, predict the time spent doing your homework for a student who spends 12 hours watching TV. Well, according to the graph, our answer should be somewhere around 18. So let's, uh, let's put it in the graph and see what we get. All right, so it's 12 hours. So we go negative 1 times 12 plus 30. And hopefully those of you who are speedy at math can realize that. Oh, look at that, 18 hours, right? 18. And so with these, it's just a matter of using the graph to help you pick out what the y-intercept is. And then you just got to do a little finagling. Um, usually I do it with the x and the y intercept to figure out what your slope is. All right, so I hope this was helpful to you. Um, good luck with these. These are a little trickier, but I know you can do them.